How's it going, folks? And welcome back. It's episode number 72 of Park 2 Primera. Today, you might be able to hear it. My voice is struggling a little bit, but we're going to get through this together. And hopefully, we're going to get through the Champions League quarterfinals where we've been drawn against Hannibal's old club in Manchester United. Yeah, uh, a Manchester United team who aren't actually doing all that well in England, but they have a pretty good team. Solskjaer's still the manager, albeit in 2028. You can see here, Bruno is still vice-captain, but their key player apparently is Martin Odegaard, who I feel like this year in Football Manager is really, really good. It's going to be interesting to see if he's as good next year, of course, with his move to Arsenal now complete. But yes, a bit of a task at hand for us, a bit more difficult than Benfica, I think it's safe to say. Uh, the good news is, if we look at our team, we're mostly at full fitness. Uh, I mean, Hardy's not fit. I realise that I'm just kind of ignoring Hardy here. He is still here, by the way. For the for the Hardy appreciators out there, people who you know remember him from way back when in the day, he he is here. He plays very occasionally. He doesn't do a lot, does he? Now, since you were last here, we've actually played three matches in all competitions. And by all competitions, I, of course, mean just La Liga. Uh, the Copa del Rey final is scheduled for after today's Manchester United games. The plan is to do that as an episode tomorrow, potentially with a Champions League semi-final if we're in it. If we're not, uh, I might use it as an opportunity to do an overview of the footballing world as it is right now. So we'll play the final to kick things off. We'll have a look at what's been going on in all the major leagues, who the big players are, some of the best regens. The kind of stuff that is somewhat useful to know, I suppose, as we approach, what, eight years into the save game? Uh, so that's the plan, but not before we get through today's action and recap well, the earlier action, which included two wins and a draw. We beat Sociedad 3-1. Fabian Velez with two goals in this one. I feel like this game isn't really done justice by what you can see here. Because if we just look at things, Taliso was sent off in the 26th minute. The score was 0-0 at that moment in time. But despite that, we played really well. We switched to a 4-4-1 formation. We ditched the centre attack in mid. And, uh, well, it worked reasonably well for us. We ran out 3-1 victors despite being a man down. Unfortunately, against Valladolid, you know, that team that we dispatched off comfortably at last time out, we had them in the league. Of course, when the camera's not showing, they decided to turn up. Uh, this game finished 2-2. Uh, we should have won it. Let's be honest, we should have won it. Siapina grabbed two, but it finished 2-2. You can see the stats here. They had three shots on target. Two of them went in. Just one of those days, really. And well, most recently, we took on Osasuna, and in this game, Fabian Luzzi continued what's been a somewhat under-the-radar performance this year. I feel like he's never really playing in live comms, but against all the teams I play him against, you know, as part of the rotated eleven. He does pretty well. Nine goals in 15 appearances in the league is nothing to scoff at. And, uh, well, I've talked in previous episodes about the fact Siapina, you know, hasn't quite matched, shall we say, his standards of last year. But in a kind of somewhat bizarre way, he's not really needed to. This is the first season in a little while where I can recall us having three players get into double digits for goals. And on top of that, there's a few players who are right on the verge of potentially getting to double figures themselves. It's been a much more of a team performance, I suppose, this year on the goal scoring front. A little bit less of a one-man band. Worth noting that one of those players who ha almost has double figure goals already has double figure assists. It's Hannibal. He has the most assists in the team. He's been here for four months. Yeah, I genuinely, I've said this a few times, this might be the most defining signing of this save game. And at the time, I genuinely didn't think that would be the case. But his contribution has been undeniable. Of course, a bit of a grudge match for him today because he signed for us from Manchester United. And due to the changes that are coming into place in real life with how the Champions League works, we can register him and he's ready and raring to go today. So just a quick little look at the league table and how things are looking. Six games left of the season. We are eight points ahead of Barcelona. We have guaranteed ourselves a Champions League spot. We're not too far away from guaranteeing and ourselves a top two finish, although, of course, that title that has felt inevitable for a little while is yet to be clinched. With our Champions League kind of position being secured, we have had our budget set for next season. Uh, I'm just going to find the inbox item. Now, where it is it? It's down here somewhere. Okay, I had to go. I had to go filter for I couldn't find it. Here it is. Board set the initial budgets, £2.1 million wage budget. Ah, transfer budget zero. I mean, is there anything more harassing than that? I guess I spent all the money in the summer, uh, or well, last summer and in the winter with Hannibal. Uh, yeah, Alfredo Perez is not giving us any money. There's £50 million in the bank, Alfredo. Can you, like, dip your hand a little deeper in your pocket and find us something? Ah, it's not ideal. 
We'll make do with it. You might be wondering, have you started to make any transfers? Uh, I have. I've decided to sign the entirety of the Bromby Youth Academy on a free transfer, simply because all of these players have kind of three or four star potential ability. They all look reasonably good. Uh, and they all have contracts expiring in six months. So sign them all on a free, put them all in the B team. Let's bolster up our B team. Let's make our under-19 team better as well. Um, they were, of course, playing in the European Championships. Unfortunately, uh, you can see it. Where can you see it? You can see it here. They lost in the quarterfinals 4-0 to Napoli. So I want to win the European Youth Cup for what it's worth. So signing all of Bromby's youngsters seems like a smart step towards that. Uh, and we have had our youth intake since you were last year, you will be pleased to know. Have we got anything good in our youth intake? Well, we've got this guy, Antonio Blyer. Um... I just I, did I offer I didn't offer him a contract. We should we should probably do that now, shouldn't we? The intake was last week. I've forgotten to sign the good players. We'll we'll do it live. It's fine. Um. Also, get rid of that release clause. Lock it in. He's happy. I'm happy. But yes, Antonio Blyer is the only real man of note who's come through our youth intake. Pretty good player. Really good technicals. Could be a good little deep line playmaker if you ask me. His physicals they're a little on the low side. Elsewhere, we have got Angel Navarro here who. I mean, he's okay. He's, he's fine, isn't he? He's fine. He's not someone to get super excited about, but we'll give him a contract nevertheless. Um, there's maybe one or two other players here who I should offer contracts to, but I'll, I'll do that off camera. Basically, in the grand scheme of youth intakes, it's not been that good. And for people wondering, actually, about Moyo. Can you remember Moyo, the guy from Zimbabwe? Very good. He's now decided he's English and he's now way less cool is what I've decided. Um, you can see he had the dual citizenship. He's now playing for England's under-19 side at 17 years old, though. He looks like a pretty good little centre-back. I'm not sure how much he has actually improved. Okay, I take it back. He has actually improved. He's also had a growth spurt, which is good to see. 15 jumping reach. He could end up getting to 20 jumping reach if he keeps going at his current rate. But no, he looks like he could be a good little player. Um, truth be told, besides, you know, I, I suppose... I was gonna. I was going to say... Um, Aguilera, but no, I wouldn't even really include him in that. I was going to say, I was going to say, besides, um, where is he? I forgot his name, Martinez. Where are you? Besides Martinez, we've not really had anyone come through. But of course, Calderon. Calderon is the one good player in all our youth intakes who I can look at and go, yeah, you've been bloody good since you came through our academy. For people wondering, would he be lacking first team football? Of course, with us bringing in Hannibal, having Pablo Torre on the bench, uh, I want to say the answer is no. He started 14 games in the league this year, 10 appearances on off the bench. He's playing a decent amount of football for a 20 year old and continuing to develop really, really well. Uh, Thinking about it, I might want to offer him a new contract before too long. His current deal expires in three years. Uh, and speaking of contracts, there are a few players with contracts expiring. Kapanu, I have offered a new deal to. He's currently weighing it up. It's not even that big of an increase. I think it's like £38,000 a week. Corridor, on the other hand, his contract expires at the end of the next year. He wants to be a star player. I don't want to make him a star player, but just to show you how much he's asking for. He wants £65,000 a week. And... Corridor is a player who I had really high hopes for, but I feel like he's just kind of hit his potential really young and he's never going to really exceed it. He's injury prone. Yes, he's a model citizen, but with a year left on his contract, we might look to cash in on him and also Velez, who is still here. Um, of course, he has a contract also running out. Currently, he doesn't want to sign a new deal. There's lots of teams interested. I think we could cash in on them and get some transfer budget if we need to. It's a little bit of a shame to admit defeat on them, I suppose. Now, I'll level with you, as I was going into this episode, I was sat thinking, there's not that much to talk about. It's only been three league matches since we last here, but we've managed to talk for nine or ten minutes about what's been going on. There's a, there's a fair bit happening at this time of the year. I feel like football manager seasons kind of go in peaks and troughs, and I feel like always March, April time, you have an intake, you have the latter stages of cup games, the crunch end of the season, and then contracts to worry about. There's stuff happening here. We're keeping on top of it. In terms of team news for today's game, this is the team we're going to go with, I think. I say I'm good. I think. No, I am. I'm confident. I'm certain. Hannibal and Siapina up top. I've bigged it up a lot, but Hannibal against his former club. Can he keep his run of form going? You'll notice that we are still running with the wider players on support and Hannibal in the middle on attack. It's worked so well, it doesn't really feel like it's something that I should change at this moment in time. Elsewhere in the team, the defence, the midfield, it's what you know and love. And, uh, well, fingers crossed, touch wood, we're going to turn up against United today. Now, we have actually played Manchester United twice. We played them in the group stages of the Champions League two years ago. On that occasion, 
We didn't lose to them. I've never lost to Manchester United. I don't know if we're still going to be able to say that today. I'm hoping that going into this home leg, we'll come out of this one at least being able to say that. Looking at their team, it's a very, very good team. They've got players like Florentino Luiz. Um, they've got Gravenberch in their team, Toro Martinez, Zuma, Longley. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not a bad little squad. It's not your typical United team, I'll say, but they have got the likes of Marcus Rashford and Jadon Sancho on the bench. Um, probably should be a little bit scared of them, I think. But anyway, it's crunch time. We've lost to a Manchester club before uh, in well, the Champions League. Let's hope that that's not going to happen today in the knockouts as well. We have an early set piece and I kind of already mentioned it. We're at home for this game. I want a big performance and I might get a big performance out of Avramides. He doesn't score when the camera's not on, I swear to God. I think loads of people think I just hate him because I always say he's rubbish and I think I should replace him. Every time I come back for an episode, the ball just drops to him like that and he scores a goal. I almost sound annoyed about it, don't I? I shouldn't be annoyed. We're a goal up. It's the Champions League knockouts and things are going well. So looking at the United team, they are playing this 4-2-3-1. I feel like actually our system works really, really well against this. Kapanu does a great job of marking out advanced playmakers kind of in the centre attack and mid spot. It's kind of his job when we don't have the ball. Um, it's something that he's done really successfully in the league. So I'm feeling cautiously optimistic here. We're at home. We've been great at home this year. Um, I'm really just hoping that we can live up to our expectations and give a performance over the two legs. I don't want us to be in a situation where we look back and go, man, we underperformed. We didn't show our best. And well, oh my word, if it hadn't ended up in the back of the net, I would have been livid. It has ended up in the back of the net, no. And uh, it's 2-0. Pedro Porro's got it. It's fallen to him very fortuitously. Hannibal had some really good movement here, actually. Like, really interesting movement. Movement that you don't see from other players here. The ball across. Avramides nearly grabbed a second. Farinez, I think the Venezuelan goalkeeper, made the initial save. But it's fallen the way of Pedro Porro. Am my, oh my, oh my. It's 2-0. It, surely not. Sure, it is. It, it's 3-0. It's that was a quick free kick taken by Sandro Tonali, I think. We're 3-0 up after 25 minutes. What's happening? I mean, granted this United team, they're fourth in the league, but yeah, Tonali takes a quick free kick. Capanu heads it on goal, and then Pedro Porro helps it on his merry way for his second goal of the game. We've had five shots. Three of them have ended up in the back of the net. Could we have wished for a better start than this? I mean, don't concede now. I was just getting excited and giddy, and now it's 3-1. They've got an away goal. And uh, let's not get complacent. Let's just calm down, everyone. Rem remain vigilant. You know what? I'm just, I'm just going to demand more from the players. No complacency. 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 Slipping in, please. A bit disappointed that Kapanu couldn't win the header there, especially because he won one for our goal. But yeah, Zuma's pretty good in the air, isn't he? Okay, an action-packed first half comes to a close. In the end, there wasn't that many chances in it, but we took the ones that came our way. And truth be told... We absolutely deserve it. Hoping for more of this in the second half. We did continue to create chances through that first half, but we didn't see any highlights of them. So that's something I would like to change. Uh, I mean, I'm looking at the team performances. The midfield's done great. See a Pina, uncharacteristically quiet. And you know what? I'm going to make a bold call here. I'm going to bring in Luzzi for him. I'm going to make an early change there. Uh, taking off see a Pina, debatably our best player on his day. But Luzzi... He's offered me goals off the bench before. Hopefully he can do it again here. Although, even if this finished 3-1, I think we'd look at that as a really, really positive result here. And well, Pedro Porro could be looking for his hat-trick inside Avramides. There's a man on the overlap. Is Hannibal going to pick him out? He is. Perez. Bit isolated now, but he picks out Avramides in the wide area, who plays it into Tonali. Hannibal is there, and that, that is beautiful, isn't it? I mean, sometimes you look at goals in Football Manager and you go, that was a good goal. This was a really good goal. The passing play here, a few times players kind of ran themselves into corners and if they were lesser quality, they may have wasted it. Avramides's ball was through was great. Tenali's ball to Hannibal was smart as well. And Hannibal gets one over on his former club, scores, makes it 4-1. And we're into another highlighter. This is Manchester United. Oh, sorry, no, not Manchester United, Manchester UFC. Don't want the Manchester United lawyers coming after me. Uh, Pedro Porro, Estevez, Tenali. It's five. It, I don't know what to say. I, I really, I love this team that we've built here at Racing. I've seen it in the comments a lot. Like, it's not a team full of global superstars, you know, the best players I could possibly buy. 
But just as a collective unit, they just play so well. And it's just fun to watch them play. And I feel like it's a team that's evolved over time. And I think in the last year, we really have taken that next step. I mean, look at the stats. Look at everything here. I don't really want to make any subs. It's one of those games where everyone's playing so well. I don't want to touch it. It, could, could, it can't finish 6-1. It can't. It can't. It won't, surely. Hannibal. Estevez. Maybe fouled? Not fouled. I mean, if we concede another... I mean, there's, there's, oh no, Tonali. What was that? Oh no, that's a red card, isn't it? Um, mm, I mean, that was unnecessary. <laughs> what have you done, lad? I mean, the only good thing here is that Hannibal's natural position is centre mid. I've actually been playing him out of position all of this season. Not that you would know it. I think we'll just play him as a deep line playmaker on defend. And you know what? We'll just see out this game to finish 5 1. Okay, okay. Calm down, everyone. No more suspensions, please. I don't know why Tenali's done it. Answers on a postcard if you know why he's decided to murder a man. Uh, Lottie did get injured with a knee injury who was their left back. I guess Popov came in? I mean, hmm. It looks like they maybe... Oh, they moved long, long lay to left back. That makes sense. Huh. That was really good, wasn't it? That was fun. I enjoyed that. It, feel, it feels weird to kind of have this run of games we've had where it just seems to be just clicking but it really was just a delight to watch it's a bit of a shame because Tonali played so well there that he has been sent off uh, I mean Pedro Porro grabbed two goals considering this man was not a right winger before we came in I think it's been quite a successful transition for him I mean he looked really good in that game he was in the right places at the right time I mean there's still a second leg to come we have got to go to Old Trafford 5-1 is Pretty good, but weirder things have happened. This is Football Manager. Uh, in between the games, we've got a game against Athletic Club Bilbao. Not going to cover that today. Doesn't doesn't seem worth it with how the league's going. So I'm going to return in a week's time. A trip to Old Trafford. Don't expect another 5-1. Let's go and see what we can pull off, shall we? Okay, folks, we're back. Game number two, the second leg. Not this, isn't it? This is this is the game since you were last here. Remember Athletic Club Bilbao? Well, we we smashed them. 2-0 victory. Then I just got man of the match again. He keeps getting man of the match. He keeps getting man of the match after I've said I'm gonna sell him. I don't know how to feel about it. On the one hand, it's maybe putting him in the shop window. Maybe it's making him more likely to get some mammoth offers in the summer. On the flip side, part of me thinks maybe I should just keep him as a backup centre-back. I mean, he has played 13 games as a starter this year, which is not an insignific insignificant number of games, but uh, I don't know. He's probably gone, in he? I need transfer money from somewhere, and I feel like he's a player we could possibly sell on. Uh, in terms of transfers, all the Bromby youngsters have agreed to sign for us, so we've got a load of uh, Swedish players joining us. We've also got Shu from Midgeland joining us. Um, I liked his current ability. I might have agreed to sign him before I then got the scout report. Um, should we say question marks over his potential? Yeah, probably not the best transfer in the world. The other signings here from Levante are just staff members. They're, they're not that exciting. We've got Javier Olmo, who's a sports scientist, and Esteve, uh, who I think is quite a good coach. He's young, 35, maybe some room to grow. Uh, He's decent though, isn't he? So that's what we've got going on there. There's not too many exciting signings going on. But of course, we've got a Champions League second leg to get into here. It's at Old Trafford. I feel remarkably relaxed about it all. In terms of the team news for today's game, Tonali is suspended because he's an idiot. So as a result of that, Hannibal is going to drop into box-to-box -box midfielder for us. I think it's a role that he can do reasonably well, the world-class 25-year-old midfielder. And then that opens up a spot for Pablo Torre to come in, and we will be playing him as a shadow striker. Um, it's a role that I wouldn't ever normally play him in, but given how well it's worked, the role itself, in terms of when we've changed the system, I feel like we've got to put him in it again today and just hope that he can slot in and do a job for us. I mean, even if we don't play that well... We should make it through against United. I mean, I feel like we've been pretty professional so far when it comes to cup competitions this year, getting our work done in the first legs. I feel like we've already done that to an extent. But it is Manchester United. It is the Champions League. Weird stuff happens in these kind of matches, especially away from home in Europe. So uh, let's wait and see. I'm not getting complacent just yet. And well, they've got an early throw-in. I mean, if they score early... 
Would that commence the squeaky bum time? Quite possibly, although Ramadani plucks the ball out the air. It is worth noting Ramadani on the verge, I believe, of possibly signing a new contract for in the region of £80,000 a week. Um, we may give him that contract. We may not. I don't think I've offered it to him yet. He was asking about it and I told him to wait till the end of the year. So it's it's a problem for Jack in a week or two's time in game to worry about. But hopefully he can have a good performance here. I talked about it last episode as they score. No, I talked about it last episode, our run to get to the semi-final, you know, where we beat the likes of Bayern Munich and then we eventually lost to Man City. Um, one of the big kind of things about that run was just insane goalkeeping. So I'm hoping that Ramadani, when we call upon him, is going to do the business. There's a slight irony, I suppose, to the fact I'm saying that as he concedes a goal inside the first 10 minutes. Gvardiol tries to switch the play over to Pedro Porro, who of course was man of the match last game out on the right-hand side. United now in possession, bringing it forward. I mean, if they score one more here, suddenly I, I might start to worry slightly because with their away goal, if they win 4-0, we're out. I mean, if you'd, if, I, if you'd heard me say that at the start of this game, you probably would have thought I was mad. But genuinely, uh, I'm a little bit worried that if they get another, they get the momentum. I'm quite happy for this to be the most boring game ever, or alternatively, for us to possibly score from a set piece, although it's going to be cleared away. Hannibal is on a booking. Let's hope he doesn't follow in the footsteps of Sandro Tonali here and can keep his cool as he plays the ball forward to Avramides, who lo loses it. And now it's Bodu bringing the ball forward for United. He is not a slow player by any means. Wambasaka to Weston McKenney on the overlap. Back to Wambasaka. They're knocking the ball around really nicely, and I do not like it. Luckily for us on that occasion, the header is going to go just wide. Corner for us here. Pablo over it, whips it in near post. Gvardiol can't get his header on it, but might still be a chance here. Hannibal at the edge of the area. I am weighing up if I should tell him to ease off tackles, Hannibal, now that he's on a booking. Oh my God, Vardiol. I mean, it's not going to count because it's offside. Can we discuss that pass from our centre-back? On his left foot, which is his stronger foot, to be fair. He wraps his foot around it. Siabina scored the header, sadly. I think he'd just gone slightly too early, but it was almost... An absolutely insane assist for Guardiola. We talk about his ability as a ball-playing defender. I feel like it was fully on show with that ball into the box there. The header was really good as well. That is a little bit annoying. So we are a goal down at the break here, but truth be told, the work's been done in the first leg. We just have to see things out here. I'm going to tell the players I'm far from pleased still. There is still a possibility they score three unanswered goals in the second half and then we have to start to panic. Hopefully that's not going to happen as all my word, Odegaard's free kick was saved by Ramadani. I don't actually think it was going in. I think that was a save for the cameras, but he got a hand on it nevertheless. And, uh, well, that very bendy corner has gone all the way out for a goal kick. Okay, I'm not overly happy with what I've seen from the team here. Uh, Torre's not played well at Shadow Striker, so I'm going to move Hannibal forward and I'm going to bring in Taliso at box-to-box -box midfielder. Elsewhere, Avramides is having a really poor game. So you know what? We're going to bring in Gukdeniz for him. I mean, even by Avramides' standards, a 6.2 is shocking, isn't it? Get him off the pitch, get him gooked and easy. He's the kind of man who scores in these games. And well, we have 25 minutes and counting left to kill off. Is it too soon to go time-wasting? I don't think it is. There was so much action in the first leg, wasn't there? I think, feel like we used all our efforts in the first leg. It's been a, a much closer game here. At Old Trafford, the stats slightly favour United, to be fair. 1-0 is probably fair on the night, but they've not really looked like getting into this game and scoring a load of goals like they've been required to. I may well be jinxing ourselves here, although with five minutes left, they're not going to score three goals, are they? Let's remain positive. Estevez, I still want to get a point on the night. I still want to get a draw here if we can. That ball by Pedro Porro. Sadly, not going to find its target. And, well, they're going to look to build from the back again, although they give it straight to Capanu who's dispossessed, but we still have it. It's fine. Can we score a pretty goal? We scored a few in the first leg that were really nice. The build-up play here has been lovely. Hannibal has it, doesn't get there, but Guk Denise does. Of course he does. And it's 1-1. The subs had his impact. Hannibal has moved back up to the centre attack in mid position, which is where I would play him under any other circumstances. And straight away, he has an impact there, doesn't he? Straight away in a position that he's not natural in. He slots in at centre attacking mid and he just makes stuff happen. Perhaps a little bit generous that his block shot has been accredited as an assist, but make no mistake, the man's good. And with that, 
United need to score four goals to take it to extra time. I mean, I still want to win the game on the night. I'm that kind of manager. I want a ruthlessness about us. I want us to go into this game, win it 2-1, you know, send a message to everyone else. As well, of course, with a win here, I don't. I think we can say it now, we're going to make it to the semi-finals of the Champions League. We're into the big stages. Well, Hannah Ball's through and he scores. Estevez with the hair gets the assist. Oh, my word. I don't know if I've bigged him up enough. I feel like I talk about him every episode for at least two minutes, Hannibal, but I feel like we might need to big him up some more here. You might have thought with him being on a booking, I'd be likely to take him off as we made changes. But no, he's the kind of man who I think you just leave on and trust that he's going to remain disciplined. He's got an assist. He's now got a goal and he's knocked out his former club in emphatic fashion. He gets man of the match as well, just for good measure showing Old Trafford what they're missing with him no longer on their books. Elsewhere in the Champions League, Arsenal just about scraped through. Arsenal have been very, very successful in Europe over the last few years. Elsewhere, Porto have just knocked out Real Madrid. Elsewhere, Bayern Munich have knocked out Sporting. So all the teams who played at home for the first leg made it through. I don't know if there's any deeper meaning to that, but that's what's going on. And well, in terms of the semi-final, we've got Bayern. We've got Bayern. I think the first leg is going to be away from home, which I think is less desirable the way things work out. If we just have a look here, I'll reverse the fixtures so my face isn't blocking it. You can see we've got Bayern away and then we've obviously got them at home just a week later. But before all of that, we've got the Copa del Rey tomorrow, everyone. I'm going to use it as a chance to look through the world of football in the Racing save. So if there's anything specific you would like to see, please let me know in the comments. I will make sure to do my best of my abilities to cover it. Um, one thing I don't really mention enough is if you enjoy the series, if you want to have a look at a specific player that you've noticed in the, in a kind of video or anything like that, or just ask any general questions, uh, over on Discord, we have a chat dedicated to parts of Primera. Sometimes I drop little sneak peeks of stuff that's coming up, but it's a cool place to hang out if you want to see some specific players or ask any questions. I'm more than happy to go into the D inner deeper depths of the save game there. Obviously, not everything can be covered in a video, but I think we have a pretty cool opportunity tomorrow to do a little bit of an overview of how the world of football looks. Anyway, gang, that is going to wrap up everything from me today. We are bloody brilliant at the moment. We are playing so, so well. Bring on Bayern Munich. We've knocked them out before. We're going to try and knock them out again. Tomorrow, it's a cup final. I want the Copa del Rey as well. Oh, it's going really well, isn't it? It's going really well. I hope you're as excited as I am for tomorrow's cup final. And well, until then, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you all in a bit. Take care. Take care. It's I'm out, Jack. That's what you do at the end. I'm out. Odd. Good outro. Nailed it. <laughs>